All right, I promised <laughs> someone in the live stream this past Sunday, which by the way, I think we're doing another one Sunday, which will be tomorrow when you're watching this. Gosh, watch out, Enzo, you just whack the camera. Anyways, I promised them, seriously, that I would do a crate training video. So that's what we're gonna do. But as you can tell, the pups, they got the ants. We're gonna try to take care of both. Crate training knowledge, pup de-anting. Cause you got the ants. Yeah, you got them. You got them. Come here, you, come here. Oh, go, go, get you, go, get you. Oh my gosh, guys. We're gonna go somewhere a little brighter. Lotus, get out of the car. Lotus, get down. Get on. Move. In case you're wondering, no, I don't have multiple cameras. I carried that crate like four times. Don't worry boys, while we are at the dog park, this way, I'm not actually doing training today, this way. Break. You boys have done well. I know, Lotus, you can't break. I'm oh, sorry. So, how do we get out of the crate, Lotus? That's right, we sit, good boy. And what else do we have to do? Good boy, gotta make eye contact. As you just saw there, they are... As you just saw there, Lotus has to sit and make eye contact. And they're not commands because They're not commands because he doesn't ever have his collar on when he's in the crate, minus this little photo op. Anyways, as I was saying, you noticed that Lotus sat and then gave me eye contact. That is not a command. I don't ever use a command to do it. Lotus, uh-uh. Generally speaking, they would never have their collars of any kind on in the crate. We just, we don't like leaving them with collars on. Generally speaking, I just, I don't feel comfortable leaving them unsupervised even in a crate with a collar on because just, you know, just never know. You know, you saw it took like two seconds to get them out of the crate. We'll tell you that you need to start doing that from the beginning and be forewarned, it's going to take a while. 
Uh, the very first time, I mean, so you have to understand, the sit part isn't too hard. Oh, good boy, Enzo, go poopy. The sit part isn't too hard because most dogs, if you kind of put your hand up and snap a little, uh, just instinctively, they will just kind of sit down. The eye contact, that's a little bit harder once they're sitting. So what you have to remember with that is, when you're, when you're teaching the eye contact, you know, what I would do is I would unlock the crate so it was ready to open, but I'd have my foot on it so it couldn't open in case they decided to break the sit and try to come out. Lotus, leave it alone. Enzo, you too. Oh, go poopy, Lotus. Be ready to open the door and literally the second, because they're only going to do it quick, Lotus will sit there and hold it now but in the beginning they're not going to do that they're just in the second they look at you and give eye contact open it up and be like yes good job and give them praise and they'll start to understand that slowly and you'll be able to hold it longer and longer same with the sit you know uh honestly if they sit you know as soon as they sit make them give the eye contact i mean you gotta get to use your own judgment but a puppy, especially one that's like eight, nine, ten weeks old, they're not gonna have much of an attention span. All right, we gotta go in the dog park to get the bags. Lotus, come on. There's no other dogs in here. It'll be okay. Come on. It's okay. Come on. Lotus, come on. Oh boy. Come on, boys. Lotus. Oh, good eye contact. Enzo. Oh, good eye contact. I know, it's your arch nemesis. Any other pup. Alright, I'm gonna try to show this as if they were pups. Like how quick this has to be. Lotus, break, calm, sit. I mean, it's literally that quick. The second they look at you, it's, in your case, it wouldn't be break. It would be you throw the door open and give them lots of praise. Good job, good boy, good girl. Heel. All right, we're gonna do some impromptu training, I think. I know I said we wouldn't, boys, but it's hard to pass up. Break. <laughs> Heel. Heel. Sit. Come on, bud. Oh, hi. 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 Come. It's fine. I'm trying to get. I'm. It's the little one that I'm trying to get used to other dogs. He's actually. He's not mean. He's barking because he's afraid. Oh, yeah. No, that's fine. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. Yeah. Lotus, it's okay, bud. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. It's okay. All right, they gotta go. Say bye. Wow, boys. That was a lot. All right, well, we'll finish up the uh, crate conversation when I can warm up, because it's, uh, it's like 23 degrees out, feels like 16, they say, and I believe them. Good job, yeah, yeah. All right, back at the house here. I have to say, I am so proud of you, Lotus. It was your first time playing with another pup that's not Charlie. You know, in those situations, filming kind of comes second, keeping an eye on them, making sure they're safe, that takes priority. So I was trying to hold the camera in their general direction, but I don't know what I got or didn't get. She was telling me that Basically, both of those dogs were rescues. One of them they just got recently. 
they actually only come to the dog park when there's nobody there because they're still unsure of how that dog's going to deal with other dogs. So actually it was good for them and their dog too. Um, and they literally ran back and forth across that fence line. Enzo, Lotus, and then her two dogs. They must have done it. I'm not even kidding. 50, 70 times at least. It was ridiculous. They kept going nonstop. Really? Jeez. Yeah, I mean, he was barking, but Enzo was barking. Their dogs were barking. I mean, all they were. It was wasn't like an angry bark per se or anything. And Lotuswood kept coming up to me and like, like kind of checking in and stuff. So I mean, it was really good. Um, really happy with that. And hopefully we'll get to do some more stuff like that, right, buddy? Well, come on. It's like a little over a day's worth of towels. Working on tonight's video. You boys want to get lunchy? Oh man. Boys, we forgot to run the dishwasher. You gonna wash these? How about you? Now what are you gonna do if I trip on these? No samples. That is. You gonna eat? That's a good boy. Oh, no. Maybe later. So maybe I eat if you don't shine a bright light in my face. Fair enough. Six and a half hours later. I know. I'm back though. I'm sorry. I had to run an errand. Now you'll notice, I did not say a word to him. I didn't tell him to sit, didn't tell him to look, look me in the eyes, nothing. Good boy, good boy. I've got the draft, it's getting dark, we need to hurry. Make a quick park run, nothing too crazy. I'm sorry, I had to run an errand. I know, but it'll be for good cause. It'll be for good cause. So we've got a new computer because YouTube is killing my current one. And then bribe for the wife when I tell her I bought a new computer. So you gotta bribe mom. Yeah. Say look, but it's okay, she got something too, so she'll be okay. Less time editing, more time with pups, right? Yeah. All right, enough talk, let's go to the park. All right, so we ran out of the house so quickly, I forgot that I am not dressed properly. I forgot gloves, I forgot a hat. It's like, 22 degrees outside right now and i'm wearing what amounts to a windbreaker and a t-shirt but here we are boys so we didn't get to finish our discussion this morning because the pups decided to go run laps oh, pee -pee. um but the crate that we have it's linked below as is the fj step by the way that gets asked like every video oh, i'm so cold i can't even think straight all right, you know, I was gonna finish up the discussion of the crate, but I am so cold that I can't even think straight. And I've said, um, about 87 times already. And, um, like right there. Enzo. Come on, Lotus. Buddy, are you cold at all? Are you cold at all? No, cause you got the two coats. Lotus, come. Deer are like knocking trees down. I thought you did that somehow. <sighs> uh, Enzo, come. What the pup do you think you're doing? Why are you obsessed with going in the brush now? Huh? Heel. Break it. 
Come on, Lotus. Wait. All right, so I kept it recording because I had to carry it anyways. Now I can put it in my pocket, but at least I do remember that there's hand warmers in here at least. One eternity later. Okay. Oh, I cut that short. I think other than maybe like a downpour coming out of nowhere, I've never cut a park trip like this short before. Oh, it was just so cold. Look the keys. The hand warmers helped. My ears, my whole head, freezing. They don't care. They're having a blast. They're running around like crazy. Time of night, the deer were everywhere. Okay. All right. All right, I was in such a rush when I took them out that I don't know how much of that footage will be usable, to be honest. But as I was saying, you know, these crates are linked below if... Uh, you want to get one. What's nice is they come with a divider. We don't have them in here obviously anymore where you can make them smaller because when you're crate training you want to give them as little space as possible. So really for those first couple months they're just going to get half the crate. Oh yeah and I know I mentioned this but I don't know if I'll keep it in because it was again it was such a mess but new computer because the YouTube edits are taking way too long. Oh Rally. Hi. So crate training is super important, even if you don't plan to leave them in the crate forever, which is fine. I mean, like our pups, they, they lay in the, our bedroom. We have beds for them, which I'm sure you've seen. But as a pup, like you don't want to give them free reign of your house when you leave. So Lotus obviously always goes in this crate. Enzo was always in this crate till he got to a certain age. We've kind of gone back and forth. Enzo went a long time without being in this crate and then he started to have little meltdowns. So we went back to putting him in his crate. Now I've been slowly transitioning back out. He seems fine now. It's just when I was working not at the house for a couple months, I was gone a lot back during the summer. And I think he just wasn't used to that. So he kind of was acting out a little. Just things that he would never do typically. Like, oh, let me knock over this trash can. And, oh, I see you got this bag of treats. Let me rip them open and eat, eat them all. Where normally I can sit here with a plate of food and he won't touch it. Got the act outs. Yeah, you acting out. You got the teenage act outs. Oh, dropped the ball. We oh, got Frisbee. Now, I know this video has been a mess, and for that I apologize. But I will say, you know, just some quick tips. When you get the pup, obviously, they should always be in their crate, like at night when you're not with them. Just for safety, plus potty training purposes and everything else. And that's why even with the crate, why we you want to have the divider, because... They're so small and that crate is actually so big that they could potentially go to the bathroom in one corner of it. And you don't want them to do that, so that's why you limit the space. Same with with your house, honestly. When you start giving them access to your house, you should do it piece by piece so they don't have full access. But anyways, you know, some other things you can do is feed them their meals in the crate so that the crate is seen as like a happy place. You can also lay blankets over it. They have crates that aren't like see-through. I don't like those though because I don't think they give enough airflow. I prefer these so that they have all the airflow and they can see everything. But at night, what we would do when they were puppies is we would lay a blanket over three of the four and maybe leave it a little bit at the bottom so that way, basically you just want air to be able to flow through. You don't want them to overheat. We've never been the type to leave food or water in their crates with them. The one thing we would do is we would leave very select toys, usually ones that we just felt were the most safe, where there was, like I would never, I'm not saying you can't necessarily, but I would never leave something like this where they could eat an ear off of it or something. Typically we would leave like uh, a teething toy because that's the only time that it really mattered. I've watched the cameras. They, they don't play with them, honestly. When they're in the crate like that for whatever reason. And you have to realize too, again, I'm sorry if this video is a mess. Today has been just unexpected. I didn't plan to go buy a computer. I didn't, originally, I had planned to shoot this all this morning when we went out. I didn't plan for them to run into those other pups and wear themselves out. In my mind, it was, I was done shooting for the day and realized like, oh wait, I didn't finish. But, you know, the, the main thing is, crate training is so important because Dogs are den animals. They like having that safe space. Even now, you know, they're always open and available to them. And so I'm not playing fetch. There are times, plenty of times, like if we're hanging out down here, or I used to work down here a lot, I don't as much now, but they'll just go in there and lay because it's comfortable and they like it. 
I mean, if we had a big enough house or like I had a big enough office, I would keep their crates like in my office just so they could have a space to go lay in. I hope this answered most of the crate questions or at least enough to get you started. By all means, you guys can always comment below or DM us on Instagram. We respond to every message, every comment. By all means, definitely leave any questions you have. If for some reason you don't get a response, you can always message us again. Now, like DMs, I, I seriously doubt we would miss a DM, but sometimes the comments, the way YouTube does the comments, it's it's tricky. And sometimes I'll go back through them and find random ones that I somehow missed from like weeks ago. And I don't even know how we did it, so. Baba.